guys, welcome to another video and today we have a special surprise. It's not very often that I get surprised by softwares, but today I was preparing a, a different video and I got a notification that Substance has been updated and we have some amazing tools. And I was like, what the hell guys? Like, why, did, why didn't I get any like notification on my email or something that, that we had new stuff? So let's start going over the main things right here. The first thing, glass. We now have a glass channel inside of the basic material so that we can texture and generate the glass materials that we want. So this is a sample scene that comes included with the new update here for Substance. And as you can see, we got this glass bottle, we got this glass, uh, this glasses, and we got even uh, this ice, ice cubes with like translucent material. You're not gonna get the best result right here. Remember that this is still a sort of like a real time viewport, but still gives you a very nice idea of how this thing is gonna behave. So if you navigate over here to, let's go to the translucency table, what transparent, you're gonna see that we have a folder for glasses and at first i was a little bit curious about how they handle this like is this a different shader normally you would have to change the shader over here but no it's, this, it's still the same um like a metallic roughness map that we've been using or metallic roughness shader that we've been using the only thing is that they added a translucency color absorption color uh, and a couple of others, this one, code color, code opacity, code roughness. So we got way, way more things that we can play with. Remember that if you're working on a different project and these guys are not enabled, you can go to texture set settings and over here, just click on this little plus sign and add it from the list. You can see on this one, we have a lot of things. We got, again, translucency, absorption color, which are the most important ones, and then code color, code opacity, and code roughness. Going back here to the layers, you can see that this base layer right here has its color and everything, and we can change how glassy the, sub, sub, the substance or element is. In this case, this one would look more like a porcelain uh, glass, but if we bring the translucency all the way to one, it's the exact same thing as if we are in Blender and we use the new material right here, the transmission, and we bring the weight all the way to one. So this map right here, this, this translucency map, it's gonna go directly into the transmission, which tells us, are you a complete glass, like completely transmissive, a transmissive surface, or are you gonna stop certain light from, uh, like from affecting you? Absorption color is gonna be the color of the actual element itself. So if we want sort of like a red glass or like a black glass or like a blue glass or whatever, we're gonna be able to change it over here. Again, very, very cool. This one's gonna be slightly different on Blender. I might uh, do a little bit of it later on about this because as you can see, the transmission does not have a color. So you're gonna be controlling the color based on this one right here on the main color. You can use a coat and change its color as well. So again, it depends on what you wanna do. But over here, I mean, that's that's just great. Now, another one that really like impressed me is the following. Normally, when we're working with the material, we would literally go over here, um, add a new, like a fill layer, for instance, and let's say I want to add some like uh, like fingerprints or dust or whatever. I'm gonna change the color on this thing to this sort of like a reddish color, just so that we can see it. And I would need to right click, create a black mask, add a fill layer or add a mask or whatever. Now you can literally just drag and drop something like this dust layer into this. You can see that a little square appears right there look at that so a new square just drop it right there and it will automatically create a black mask and fill it with the specific mask or layer that you're using right here so this like grunge dust concrete which is again very cool so the other thing that you can do other than dragging and dropping it to the little square over here is instead of having this fill layer if you just drag and drop this on top of the object it will create a new layer all the way on the top right here with a new base material with this element applied so again super super comfortable because if i want to add some dirt ground layer to this one i just add it to the element and then with this material i of course would go in here and modify some of the elements or the effects we can of course go to the mask builder and change some of the parameters so yeah <laughs> I, I don't know man uh, this is again one of those times where i i am genuinely surprised and happy to see some cool improvements to the software it seems like november has been like the update month for every single software 3d studio max i think got an update um i think um what was it houdini got an update cinema 4d zbrush of course blender so there's been a lot of updates everywhere there's one more thing i want to show you about this uh update here inside of uh, substance painter this next one guys is just amazing so before when we wanted to use or we wanted to use a texture from the outside we just had to drag it import it as a texture drag it into a mask or whatever now look at this we just drag this ketchup stuff right here i'm gonna import it as a just base color and we got the ketchup right there this is an image just from google even has a watermark sorry about that but this is ready and you can move this around place it wherever you want and we can change the scale for instance if we want to make this a little bit smaller we can of course change the like multiply mode so that we get rid of the white colors we can move this around move this around we can rotate it it's just literally like placing a 3d asset in top of our element and uh, well, now we have it. So 
So this, you can also import a, a mask. So let's say, uh, let me add another like a fill layer over here. And this one's gonna be, I mean, whatever, like a green color. So if I add a black mask and I add this image, I can literally drag and drop it into the mask and it's gonna create a new fill layer with that grayscale element right there. Right now, as you can see, it's not really affecting it properly because it's mapping on top of the of the element right here and the plate is over here, but we can change it, I believe. Yeah, there we go. So I can change this thing so that it's only affecting that part right there. And then of course, as we already know, we could add, for instance, like a levels and invert this. So as you can see, now we're gonna have this sort of like green color. So instead of having to import the texture, set that as a texture and then use it however we want, we literally just drag and drop and have it exactly where we need it. So yeah, that's it guys. Uh, there's a couple of extra changes to the little like uh, line tool that we've been using. We, I, I have a video for that for the stitches. Um, there's also a couple of changes in just compression quality and things like that. But believe me, just with the glass and this drag and drop function, Substance Painter got a whole lot better. I'm probably gonna be doing a premium course about Substance later on. It's not on the like uh, immediate courses. We do cover Substance Painter in the Blender course and also a little bit on the Maya course, I think. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it guys. If you like this video, Make sure to leave a like, share, subscribe, and let me know what else you want to learn about. I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.